<laughs> okay, so today I'm joined by Jay Wall. Thank you so much. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, sure. Um, I'm Jay Wall, like you said. Um, I um, I go by he, him pronouns. Um, I've lived in the Birmingham area pretty much all my life, um, somewhere around the Birmingham area anyway. Um, and I am the front office administrator at Magic City Wellness Center. Um, it's the first and only LGBTQ affirming clinic in the Birmingham area. So that's pretty cool. Um, so while there, I feel like um, I have some impact on the com community, at least by um, making a pleasant experience for everybody who comes into the clinic and all of that. Um, as far as other advocacy projects that I'm working on, um, not as much as I would like yet, um, but I have um, recently participated in at least one meeting with the LGBTQ Advisory Board for the new UAB Gender Clinic. Um, and I also have been wanting to kind of get more involved with um, Mayor Woodfin's LGBTQ Advisory Board as well, but haven't haven't done much with that yet, but I hope <laughs> to. So. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm also looking to work with the board, so maybe we will collaborate in the future. Um, yeah, it'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm very thankful for the Magic City Wellness Center and all of the, the amazing work y'all do there. How are you operating right now during COVID in this um, interesting era. Oh Lord, it's it's interesting. <laughs> um, we're doing a combination of telehealth visits and um, on-site visits, so we have kind of a a little, you know, different way of doing things right this second. <laughs> um, and recently, we just um, you know de dealing with the new um, like all the more numbers of COVID cases that have been rising and all that, we've now decided we're going to shut down on Fridays oh, um, yeah. and then uh, kind of extend our hours through the week. So it's, it's kind of weird right now, but. <laughs> it definitely is. It feels like a, I guess in a positive light, a new adventure every day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I guess if you're not learning something new, you're stagnating. So <laughs> I guess. Well, uh, <laughs> what does pride mean to you? Um, well, I guess what I would say pride means to me is um, valuing yourself as being important and being even beautiful, um, despite whether or not other people have treated you that way. Um, so I know here in Alabama, you know, a lot of a lot of people um, are a little bit more conservative and um, a lot of LGBTQ kids have parents that are unsupportive and things like that. So pride is just it's just being able to surpass that and still know that you're beautiful regardless. Um, and then, uh, you know, just a sense of understanding that all lives are important. Um, and it's important to be vocal about that. And so having that sense of pride makes, makes you want to be vocal, makes you want to fight for yourself and the other people in your community. So, um, so what does community mean to you? And in particular, what do you love about the Birmingham community? Um, well, community, I guess, means to me uh, the people around you that make you feel at home and that make you feel affirmed and accepted no matter who you are and, you know, how you identify. Um, and your community is, should lift up, you know, uplift you and, and stand behind you when, when there is a fight being, being had. So um, that's what I believe community to be. And I really I value the community here in Birmingham because, like I was saying earlier, you know, we come from a very conservative state. So I feel like the community here is more tight knit than a lot of other communities because we live in an area that hasn't always been so accepting. Um, and so it seems like with that like tight knit feeling, everybody really bands together um, to kind of fight adversity to some degree. So I find that really beautiful that, um, that in a state like this, there is a community that is so strong. So I agree. Uh, there's something super wonderful and beautiful about the grassroots community here. Um, I spent a lot of time in San Francisco and it's like, you know, when you, when you live out West and you grow up out there, you don't like appreciate like the struggle, you know, yeah. and, um, not to say that, you know, I mean, San Francisco, we have a lot of pride, but, <laughs> right. um, 
So tying into the library, uh, what uh, do you think about the, the motto, reading is fundamental? Um, I mean, I definitely think it, it's fundamental to understanding other viewpoints. Um, it's one of the best ways to expand your horizons and learn new things. Um, and you can really find almost any topic that you're interested in to, to gain more information about. So I really, I definitely agree that that is, that is essential. You know, it's definitely important to, to expand your horizons and to pick up a book and, uh, and learn everything you can about the things that are important to you. So. Absolutely. And um, so what, what role do you see the library playing in the LGBTQ community and what kind of projects would you like to see us take on in the future? Um, well, I just remember like some of the times that I've walked into a library, um, you know, there's, there's little nooks and crannies everywhere we can sit and you can read and stuff like that. And I feel like, I feel like it would be really cool to have maybe, um, something called like a community space or LGBTQ space or something like that that's um that's specifically for LGBTQ literature and stuff like that um or maybe an LGBTQ book fair or something like that for kids or anybody really um just something that shows that there is plenty of literature out there if you're seeking any information about your questioning your gender identity or your sexuality or anything like that. Um, I think it's really important for people to know that there are plenty of books available for them if they would like some more information on those topics. So I think that would be very cool. Yeah, absolutely. I think we could we could definitely advertise that more. Um, I know that we have some online book services that have specific LGBTQ like categories but mm -hmm. um, I think it would be really cool to have some programming you know specifically for the queer community I do have a book club this month uh, we're Ooh. reading a, a young adult book yes I could send you information on that <laughs> oh yeah please <laughs> it's kind of late in the game because it you know it's next Tuesday but you know you're, you're welcome to join join the meeting <laughs> if you'd like um <laughs> so, <I'll try. laughs> no pressure um so <laughs> are there any books or authors or films that have been super influential and significant in your life um yeah actually fairly recently i've, I've uh, read a couple of books that um and most of these are for trans individuals mostly trans men um that's what I am and who I am so um that's kind of what I <laughs> lean towards but um I just read something called um two spirits one heart um by Marsha Azumi and it's basically um it's a mother's account of experiencing her son coming out and transitioning to male and um and just seeing her experience as something unique um, and so it really was helpful when I was coming out to my dad, I gave it to him to read and it was something that I think helped him, um, in that transitional process. Um, another one is, uh, gender failure. It's, um, by Ivan Coyote and Ray Spoon. It's, so it's two, two trans men who are basically telling their stories, um, chapter, like each chapter alternates between the two. And they kind of tell some funny stories as well as like some, you know, heart wrenching things, of course, too, and whatnot. So um, I don't know. It's really, it's always been really cool for me to read about other trans men. Um, and then, you know, that one about uh, that one from the perspective of a mother was really, really, really cool to me. So um, those are a couple of recommendations. Also, another one um, Becoming a Visible Man by Jameson Green. That's another good one for trans men. So, yeah, those are a few of, few of my recommendations. I, I love books on uh, gender, gender studies. I, yeah. I I read a lot of them. I, I went to school for art history and got really into, like, Judith Butler mm -hmm. and uh, and some other artists and actually wrote um, a great uh, term paper on, uh, on a trans men uh, photography. We can talk about Ooh. that later. I'll send that to you. <laughs> Yeah, send me all kinds of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really great. The really great thing about books and just media is like being able to identify and finding yourself in that. 
So I'm glad that you're out there looking at books as we all should be. I should be reading more books. For sure. Um, I mean, I should read more books for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would read so many books during quarantine and I was like, yeah. I just, I just made a ton of banana bread instead. Like, well, <laughs> that's nothing bad about that. <laughs> so, um, we're going to go into the last three questions, which are kind of, these are all really personal, but these tend to pull at the heartstrings a little. So, um, first, what, what are the things that bring you joy and how do you pursue them even when life gets hectic? Um, well, I would say my pets, they bring me joy. Um, and really, it, you know, it's not hard to make time for them. They're always there for me. I'm, I come home every day and there they are, you know, <laughs> basically just the happiest uh, when what I'm home. Do you so, have? Um, I have two dogs and then I have uh, three cats. <laughs> so I have a lot of pets. <laughs> There's never so, enough. Uh, <laughs> I said, There's never enough, you know, it's like no, it's never too no. many. <laughs> <laughs> I had one dog and three cats, and I just got a puppy, so oh. not enough. Yeah. <laughs> He's a mess. But, um, but yeah, in addition to that, um, I enjoy, like, outdoor activities, you know, going kayaking, hiking, and spending time with friends, of course. Um, I, you know, it's hard to find time, truthfully, to do a lot of those things when you're busy constantly, but I try to spend some time on the weekends to do all of that. So my next question is, um, if you could give your younger self advice, what would it be? Um, I guess it would be to not be so hard on myself. Um, I've always kind of been that way. I've been my uh, own worst critic all of my life. But um, I have always blamed myself for it taking so long for me to come out um, like I'm 30 years old now and that's, that's pretty much when I came out was 30. I'm 31. Well, I'm 31 now. Sorry. Um, but you know, I, I felt really, you know, bad about that for a while because I've struggled with my gender identity for close to 10 years. And it's taken me this long to actually like open up and say that to people. So, um, I guess I would tell my younger self, it's okay to seek help and support if you feel alone because I basically withdrew and and shut myself off from people who loved me and cared for me because I thought that they might not anymore um but I could have sought help from other people a lot sooner from from the community like I didn't join the LGBTQ community in my opinion until until I started working at the wellness center which was about a year ago so um so I feel like I joined that too late, but, but yeah, I would, I would give myself the advice to not be so hard on myself for not doing that. It is really hard to open up about those things. And, uh, and I, you know, I would have told myself, seek some help, you know, try to find people who, who struggle like you do so that you, they can relate and so that you can relate to someone. So, Absolutely. So. I mean, I commend your bravery because it, it does take, you know, a lot of courage to come into your true self. Um, and um, I'm just so honored to have you as part of this project um, and, and you living in your truth, because I feel like that's what pride is about. Mm -hmm. um, so in what ways um, would your younger self be proud of who you are today? Um, yeah, um, and I'm, I'm <laughs> proud of myself today, um, you know. So, so yeah, my younger self would definitely be really happy that I've made it here. Um, they, my, my younger self would be happy that um, I have found beauty in these differences. Um, I used to hate a lot of who I was, and now I embrace it. I think it's beautiful. Um, you know, something called being two-spirited is something that really <laughs> caught me, and, and I have always felt that way, and um, I do find it to be a very beautiful thing to be two si to see two th sides of things. Um, uh, but yeah, but yeah, definitely I would my younger self would be proud of me for, for finding such beauty in being trans. <laughs> I think so too. Um, is there any last words or, um, for anybody who might be watching that you want to share? Um, not really, I guess, I, I guess I would give, give people that same encouragement to, 
to seek out people who who may be able to relate to you um because I know a lot of people really do feel so alone um in the places like Magic City Wellness Center and the Magic City Acceptance Center and Birmingham AIDS Outreach we're we're there for this reason we're there because um because people need a community when sometimes their family can't be that for them absolutely yeah you know, or won't be that for them so i would encourage people to you know try to find others who who they can relate to and and everything so that's well, about thank it <laughs> thank you so much for your time and thank you for being part of this project my pleasure i'm so glad to be a part of anything that that helps other people well i'm um, so we're uh, this whole project is very lucky to have you be a part of it so thank you well anytime <laughs>